This is a fairly major story. It's actually one that will impact myself. I figure I wanted to watch this because uh, Bellior is a game developer. They made a game in Unity. It's called The Pale Beyond. And now, starting on, I think, uh, January 1st, they might be liable to being paying to, to having to pay Unity thousands of dollars per download. Elf, it will impact my studio. It will impact a lot of yeah. game developers that make games that you play. This is pretty crazy. Oh, and by the way, what the outcome of this is going to be is that you're going to have to buy more microtransactions in games. And games will be more monetized. It's either that or the game is going to be smaller in scope and you're going to get less content. Or it's going to cost more. Like this cost will not just... The developers aren't just going to eat this cost. They're, 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 this is going to be pushed towards the consumer. For a long time, we devs have been feeling more and more, I would say, betrayed and ignored by the engine maker Unity. In a world where you look at Unreal Engine and see the march of progress, while yeah. Unity's technical people do great things, we do see them off chasing other industries and making business moves that are particularly worrisome. In fact, almost a year to the day, I launched a video in this channel about Jesus. another wave of developers essentially having a bit of a rebellion today though it's an even more crazy situation and i want to start setting the tone today with a quote from former electronic arts executive john riccatello who is currently the ceo of unity Ooh, he explained he the sold his shares by the way a week before this happened you by saying this you're six hours into battlefield you run out of money we now charge you a dollar to reload and you're far enough in that that's going to be something that you feel okay about so he actually did yeah of course right yeah and, and that's a good point what he's making like and and again that's smart what he's saying is that once you're so invested into the game then they can start nickel and diming you and charging you because it will cost you more to get out than to just pay the fee. Use an analogy of a paid microtransaction reload. Of course, that never came to pass, but the point is, that's the kind of analogy he used. That's the sort of thinking that is going on. Recently, he said this, if you're a seven-figure developer, you can afford 75 bucks a month. True, uh, but if you're yeah. not, you can just get started or choose for an artistic reason to give your games away for free. Or if you're a hobbyist screwing around or a student, this is free. You get the full power of Unity 5 for free. There's no royalties, no fucking around. It's simple. That's really what we're announcing. Good for them. Things have somewhat changed yeah, since it then. It seems though, that way. Because only a weekend after Unity highlighted the performance of Sea of Stars, a game yeah. that's on Game Pass, getting humongous amounts of downloads and has separately sold over 250,000 copies, they have Jesus. managed to, yep, single handedly create an insane drama for themselves and actually worry developers and this all started well i think that it's it's reasonable for developers to be worried right because like whenever you realize that you're building a castle on sand and they can just change the agreement like darth vader well then what the fuck how can you possibly in good conscience develop and build a platform and build a game on something that could just be changed randomly and this is the problem, right? Is that even Unity, even if they undo everything, I think people still won't trust them. And people will still go to other platforms. Because who's to say they won't do this again in the future? The blog post on the 12th I think of part September, of the damage is already done. and it was released right at the same time as Apple's big showcase. I wonder if they were trying to bury that news in tech circles. The title is Unity Plan Pricing and Packaging Updates. Mm -hmm. Pretty you know, simple name for something sure. that's going to generate a lot of rage because this is a update to Unity's licensing plans designed, of course, to get more money out of users. Now, in this, there are some more minor elements. As an example, they are removing the Unity Plus service tier, which was a smaller scale one used by smaller indie developers uh, and perhaps, uh, you know, some solo devs, right? Okay, that's it's not replaced really the by problem. the much more expensive Unity yeah. Pro. And while that may have a bit of a sting for some, where things get 
that's a lot more spicy is this. We're introducing a Unity runtime fee that is based on each time a qualifying game is downloaded by an end user. Yep. We choose this because each time a game is downloaded, the Unity runtime is also installed. They're basically saying, right, we're two products, the Unity editor, mm -hmm. the Unity runtime. You'll have your Unity subscription that will, you know, pay for however many seats you have that have access to the Unity editor, and then we will charge you based on how many times the Unity runtime is distributed, which of course means any time your games are like downloaded, right? And well, yeah, they effectively install something onto the user's PC that tells them that there's been a download of this game. And they just want everybody to trust them that they have correct and enough fraud protection to know whenever a game is downloaded twice. You see what I'm saying? Like, how can you possibly trust them for this? And they say this because, yes, each time a game is downloaded, the Unity runtime is also installed. Also, we believe that an initial install-based fee allows creators to keep the ongoing financial gains from player engagement unlike a revenue share. Now, yeah. how does this work? Well, you have to pass a revenue threshold to be eligible. At the Free and Plus tier, that revenue threshold is $200,000, and it's $1 million for the Pro and Enterprise tiers. And you think about two hundred thousand dollars and so you have a video game that you spend a year making okay and you have three people that work on that video game so that's about a little bit under seventy thousand dollars for each person that works on the game assuming that it's divided evenly and that is also assuming that there are no secondary costs there's nothing else like that two hundred thousand dollars might sound like a lot of money but whenever you actually start aggregating it and breaking it down for like what this money is going to go towards, you will realize that that is fucking nothing. That is like nothing, man. There's operating costs, salaries, uh, paying for voice acting. If you have any voice acting in the game, paying for anything. Yeah, it's just, it's nothing. So this actually would affect a lot more people than you would imagine. Now, obviously there's like the 99% of people that it won't really affect. Because 99, probably 90% of people or 50% of people just download Unity because they're like trying it out. They're not genuinely using the product in order to make a video game for a commercial purpose. Now, you might think 200 grand in the bank? Fantastic. Here's the thing though. Uh, what if your game cost 250 grand to make, Ooh. right? And maybe you got a publisher. Ooh. That would mean that you will have, say, sold 200 grand. A lot of publisher agreements. Uh, I've even heard publisher agreements that are even beyond 50%. So, like a, a developer, uh, you know, signs a deal with a publisher and the publisher takes over 50% of the revenue. Massive. Yeah, and then there's also the Steam fees. And then there's also, yeah, there's a lot, man. Not uncommon. Yes, I, I know. It's crazy of copies yeah, you will have not fifth. made back uh, you, know, you won't have made back like money and the bill for this sort of thing will come due right this will come due in a pretty damn bad time for you because mm -hmm. you've now got to work out okay how is my studio being funded i'm not seeing revenue from the game that you know we released that just came out and it's very rare let's say a game's budget is a quarter of a million it's pretty damn rare that a game is able to cover its production budget in like you know a month or two right yeah so this may seem kind of like not that big but that's um that, that's actually a really bad time to have the bill also um interest that's actually a very good point that he brings up is like you know having to pay that very early on whenever you're also not able to pay other uh, other costs that are going to be like immediately due especially like scaling costs like if you have an online game and you're selling a bunch of copies you're going to have to scale the uh support for like servers and stuff like that or like customer support and you're going to have to scale that first because then if you don't well then you don't have the, the game that's making the money in the first place so like yeah asking for that so early on uh it, it, yeah it's actually very harmful now, now that i think about it uh, i hadn't so thought about like, this before is, this is charged He's to right. the developer what about the publisher because it's it's rev share everywhere but then what well, the developer um do doesn't pay based on a rev share the developer gets to pay on a per installed basis which oh boy there's more there's there's wrinkles to that now oh, yeah. then you have to uh, pass an installation threshold on a lifetime scale to be eligible which is 200,000 at the free and plus tier and 1 million at the pro and enterprise tier yep. then fees are structured to uh, basically allow for some I think also like a lot of game development for indie developers is based off of a dream 
And I think this is the dream that you're going to make the next Among Us, Vampire Survivors, Halls of Torment to an extent, not as popular as the first two, but still also very popular. Um, the, the, the next Among Us... Uh, the next, like, whatever game, right? Cult of the Lamb, yeah, many of these very popular, like, indie games. Cuphead, Stardew Valley, Valheim, yeah, 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 yeah. And so this is actually kind of comparable to, like, streaming to an extent, is that if people feel like they can't really achieve a dream of, like, being, like, very successful, like, streaming because there's, like, a massive cap on it, it's going to really hurt people's enthusiasm to get invested into it because they're going to realize that there's never a way there's like such a low ceiling for this. And if I get to that ceiling, all I'm going to do is hit my head. And I think that's why it's so harmful. And it's also not even harmful functionally for a lot of these developers, because as Unity said, and I think they're right, a lot of developers never even are going to hit this threshold anyway. But the problem is that saying that there is a threshold means that there can't be a dream. Does that make sense? So you can't have hope whenever you have like this ceiling that's so low. And if you develop and you do a great game, you do so well, then you're going to have to pay them such a huge amount of money. Installment costs, even from pirated copies and bots that would uninstall on a virtual machine that changes IP. You pay it once and can generate Unity. So much fake profit. Um, yes, uh, that, that is also another issue. This is also hugely bad for Steam, and small indie companies will be taking down their games because of Unity, and Steam will lose revenue because of that. Well, it's bad for everybody except for Unity, and I think in time, Unity will realize it's bad for them too. And I think they already have. That's why they're trying to walk back as much of this as possible right now. Allowances have scaled. 20 cents per install at the free and plus tier, and then that scales from 15 cents to 2 cents per install for each more than 1 million installs per month at the pro and enterprise level with a special caveat that if your game is installed in an emerging market, there will be a significantly lower flat rate. That's of course because a lot of mobile games are big in low revenue per user regions, at least say yeah. on a US dollar basis. And then you can get some credits for the fee if you integrate more of Unity's technologies beyond the editor, like say their gaming services or their mobile ad support. Ah, yeah, you can see how this is kind of working now. So, companies want money, licensing fees, those are not a particularly new thing. Now, Epic Games, right? The creators of Unreal Engine, uh, their toolset is free. But the understanding is that if you make a you know big old box game with it, then you have the first million be royalty free, and anything past that, they take 5%. Mm -hmm. And of course, because that's based on revenue and it's going up to a fairly high uh, number there. Well, it's it's a percentage base too. I think that 5% is... Uh, like, I personally am not a big fan of... I think if somebody buys a, a program, they should be entitled to 100% of the profits that they generate with that program because they bought the program. Like, I, I don't like all of this uh, licensing, like, uh, you know, pyramid scheme type bullshit. Uh, I think that it's unhealthy for society. But, uh, I mean, Unreal. Unreal is free, though. Uh, I, I thought that there was, like, a dev version of Unreal that you pay for. Is that true? Not anymore. No, it's free? Okay. I'll just assume I'm wrong. I think the idea is, hey, you make money, we make money. Everyone's happy enough. Now, this install threshold... Yeah, Mudahar had a good point. Yeah, yeah. What would happen if Adobe started charging for every, uh, uh, every video you upload and take some of the ad revenue? Exactly, yeah. Like, I just... Uh, I don't like this... I, I don't think it's good that you should be able to do this. I think if you sell a service or you sell a product, people should be entitled to the profit that they generate with that profit, uh, with that product. It's like if I go to like Home Depot and I buy something like a lawnmower and I mow somebody's lawn, I shouldn't have to pay the people that make the lawnmower a dollar. I bought the lawnmower. I should have every right to use it however I want. Also a bit of a new question, and at which point developers in the general audience then really found it become rapidly like clear yeah. that this is one of the more poorly thought out deals for game developers that really many of us have seen in a very, very, very long time. And they put out a Q&A. The Q&A is quite bizarre. So, the Unity runtime fee does not apply to our film gambling or education subscription plans at this time. So if you're an industrial plan or gambling, you don't have to worry. It's just game and app developers. You are invoiced monthly based on the like installs in a given month. And they, uh, the, the installations are just defined as installation and initialization of a project on an end device. Now, this is the big thing. There's some good, there's some bad. And this is what people are concerned about is that 
somebody can intentionally install a game like a group of people can hate install a game and then cost the developer a bunch of money fees will only start being generated and this can January absolutely happen for the bad news all of the installation threshold requirements those are retroactive right so um yeah if you have big install numbers uh yeah you're just going to be straight into this now yeah. there's a lot of problems here if you apply some of the old human brain thinking to this question so the more people who install your game especially on the perhaps razor thin margins that you'd planned before any of this became uh, apparent the more money you you then have to uh, pay uh, Unity, and your installation of a game can then actually actively harm a developer, which is fairly crazy. I did enjoy, um, of yeah, course. And, and 20 cents is a pretty good amount of money. Like, whenever you think about, like, I mean, if 100,000 people do something, that's $20,000. That's a lot of fucking money, man. Chris Wolfart, funny Twitter account, many good funny things. Pirate game, delete it, download it again. Keep on doing it. Company mm -hmm. loses 600 bucks. Fuck them, dude. Fantastic. So let's there talk about go. the problems that uh, developers and community members have highlighted and then Unity's attempts to squirm mm -hmm. their way out of this because there is quite a large amount of trust me, bro, in this. Okay, let's start with some problems. Hello, Unity. How are installs tracked or monitored? How is revenue determined? Do pirated installs count? And how would that be determined? Well, they're, they're not going to say how. And it's like, I understand why Unity wouldn't say how. Because if they say how, they also say how they're not tracked. And if you know how they are tracked, you also know how they're not tracked, which allows you to work around their system. So they're clearly not going to say this. But again, how can you possibly trust them, especially whenever they're making such a massive change? Uh, aside from other issues that many people have raised, are we going to see more games delisted you know, to avoid about this? I know, they said the same thing I costs? did. Uh, th there are so many thoughts here. I mean, make a game. Game is freemium. Game makes 200 grand from in-app purchases after being installed 3 million times. Now owe Unity 20 cents per 2.8 million installs. 560, 560 grand. That's 360 grand more than we wow. made. Yeah, this is one that is quite funny with the, uh, you know... I just can't believe that... Uh... I can't believe this is legal. I hate this licensing stuff. I think this is so harmful. Like, imagine if every single time that you made something on a Windows PC, you had to give Microsoft money. Imagine every single time that you uh, played a video game and you uploaded a video of it, you had to pay the developer money. Imagine every single time that you used to, you know, you drive your car and you're doing Uber, you have to pay Ford money for that. It's awful. I don't know why this is accepted in any any capacity. If you buy a tool, you should be entitled to the profits of that tool. Why is it different because it's software? Is there any logic to this? Because it's clearly not different because most software doesn't require this, like Windows or Photoshop. It's crazy. Imagine paying a tax or every nail you nail on a house. Yeah, their excuse is updates. I mean, Windows does updates. Yeah, what do you mean? There's updates, bro, for people who can't pay up front. Yeah, Windows does updates. With the freemium mobile model. Also, publishers are, um, are, are talking about things. So, Devolver Digital, you may have heard of them. Uh, definitely include what engine you're using in game pitches. It's important information. What a well-timed post from them. Because mm -hmm. you've got to remember with all this stuff, you know, you sell your game. Valve takes 30%. Then that split Yeah, I love seeing people defending getting cucked. It's so bad. Like, I, I can't believe that people are okay with companies setting these completely draconian rules where they just own a percentage of everything that you create with their product that you paid for. It's so consumer unfriendly and market unfriendly, it's insane. And you and your publisher, then you are charged the money. Like, that is... Uh... That's pretty rough because of where this is probably going to happen, um, like in the waterfall, at least based on how they're talking about it. A uh, developer, AgroCrab, pointed out that if you put your game onto Game Pass, that's potentially millions of installs that uh, you could potentially be asked to pay a licensing for <laughs> and a licensing fee for. And uh, well, while it may not be you, actually, as it transpires, Unity have a response to this, and I don't think the industry is going to be particularly pleased by it. Uh, I mean, hey, what about giving? access of your game to people for free for a free weekend maybe yep. uh, even demos cost money even demos 
um, the Epic Game Store free game option. That could now cost you money. For Over the Moon Games, they've said here, Hey Unity, our game The Fall was on Epic Games as a free game. I was quite happy to sell them the rights for peanuts, and the game was installed like 7 million times. How do you propose this will work? I'd owe you more money than I've made in my life. That's insane. Again, yeah. what are Unity thinking uh then of course there are developers talking about just aban abandoning the engine you know they're they're saying like all right you know what screw it uh here's one from aaron we've used unity 11 years now at flipfly and i've been teaching kids how to make games with it at a non-profit for three years after today's egregious announcement i'm actively planning to move us all to an engine with less hostile practices because yes be it on yeah that's obviously what they should do that's absolutely what they should do. It's not even a question. The Valve cut isn't so bad, gives you access to a huge audience. Um, I think that the amount that Steam takes is pretty bad. I think Steam probably takes uh, too big of a percentage for what they're doing. Uh, it's like 35%, right? It's 30%? It's 30, okay, 30%. 30% is a lot. Especially like they're not even really publishing the game. They're just simply allowing it to exist on their platform. Like that that's fucking massive. 30% until a certain amount, uh, then it scales down to 20 as more sales are made. Really? I didn't know that. Well, at least that's a bit better. 30%, but it gives you about 10,000% more customers. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, and, and that's why people still upload on the Steam. Epic, yeah, Epic Games takes like a much smaller percentage. That's why I think it's very important that you have uh, competition in the space. And that's why I've always been very negative about people that were just like any time that any other studio tries to make a launcher, they get shit on because they're not Steam. Absolutely not. That's bullshit. Like a, a monopoly is not good for the consumer. Real engine, be it Godot, there are other engines out there and people are potentially quite interested in moving now. Uh, I would bet a decent amount of money if I could port everything in um, Code. Mm -hmm. I think that's Caves of Code, which uh, there's a really good Mandalore gaming video on. Either that or Seth, I forget. But anyway, the only thing we'd lose is mobile and console, which is uh, big enough to stick around, but it probably won't be a blocker forever. Cult of Lamb! Buy Cult of Lamb now, because we're delisting it January 1st. That's, uh, that's certainly fun. Um, others have pointed out the potential for harassment here, like, yeah, you could pirate a game, install it to 500 virtual machines, and you've potentially hurt a game developer. People may say that's insane, but like... It's not insane at all. People do all kinds of crazy stuff. And also, I would assume that the tool to do that would be usable for any game. Because it's just simply replacing the executable file that you're installing to each machine to being a different file for each different game. Like, you don't even need to write new code for each different thing. You just need to input the game into the code. So it's like, as soon as one person does this, it's just possible for anything. Like, yeah, like, especially people yeah, are technologically proficient. This. They can do spooky shit with with virtual machines, right? Of course, Game Maker, Default Engine, Godot, and even Tim Sweeney have uh, chimed in on all of this. Epic saying that they've got no plans to change their perpetual license model, um, right? And uh, they're, they're going to do it so that like they can't change the deal that they've made with you um, when you sign on. Just a whole, a whole bunch of the whole industry just taking this as the easiest marketing win they could possibly get. There's actually some talk of a class action lawsuit coming from developers. I don't know if they can sue Unity. I really don't know about that. And yeah, I just, I, I don't know. Actually, yeah, I, I really, I can't say. It seems like they probably can't, but like, I don't know, I have no idea. You're wrong about Steam just being a marketplace. They provide services to serve your product to multiple markets. They're offering cloud save. They offer content management, pushing new updates, ensuring the user product is a stable version. Uh, yeah, Steam is, uh, Steam is a great service. I've been using Steam ever since I was in high school. I think Steam is great. I don't have anything bad to say about Steam other than the fact that I think they take 30%. It's a lot of money. And it's also not good for an industry for there only to be one person working in the industry. Monopolies are bad, but Steam is a good company. You're right. Um, but ultimately then, the point here is that Unity just decided to change the rules of things, uh, the mm -hmm. rules of the game really arbitrarily, because this is, uh, this is almost like a new utility cost the way that you've got to pay, or at least they want to start charging you for Unity runtime deployments. Yeah. And again, as you'll soon see, all on a trust me bro basis. And what's being said here, I already committed to their engine for my new game, put years of work into my pipeline. 
I did so under a simple per seat license I'm happy to pay. Now when I'm close to release, they spring something new on me. Not a price increase, a fundamental change in how we do business together. And that re- It's a good point. Yeah. A game can take years to make and they could be six months out from releasing the game. And then this change goes into effect in three months. And yeah, you're fucked. That's actually a really good point. Like, I don't really work in game dev, so I don't really think about this stuff off the top of my head. But yeah, these are 100% this could happen. Like Hollow Knight or Silk Song? Yeah, exactly. Really, like, that is the point here. So, let's talk about the clarifications and the regrouping. By the way, if you want to do some supporting of, uh, you know, a game developer, we're a game developer, our first game, The Pill Beyond, um, is of course Guys, on... I'm gonna play this really soon, okay? I'm, I'm gonna play it really soon. It's it's gonna happen uh, right after um, Genshin and Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah. Steam, and uh, it's made in Unity. But uh, hey, I guess if you buy it before the first of the first of January. <laughs> I wonder how mad Bellyware would be if I fucking streamed this game on January first. <laughs> I wait until January first to stream the game. <laughs> See if they're still in Unity. We won't be charged like, oh I don't know, 15 or 20 cents. Um, but also, yeah. if you want to check out store.bellular.games, we have got our art book and all those lovely Yeah, do it on the main channel, there. yeah. Man, what a story. Okay, January so obviously Unity AM. did put out some press responses here. Let's go through them. Unity will only receive aggregate data from various sources, so they'll be working off estimates, not hard one-to-one -one numbers, because people... People were wondering, like, hey, uh, what, does the Unity runtime phone home to give you a number? No, it doesn't. They have some proprietary method of working this out in a, in a method with no transparency that is literally just, trust me, bro, we'll bill you accurately. So that's cool. Uh, demos. Yeah, we're not going to overcharge you. Like, trust us, we change the rules on you randomly. So it can't get any worse, right? Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's illegal in EU. Yeah, EU is much more ahead of the ball and ahead of the game with, like, uh, online piracy and, like, not piracy, excuse me, uh, online, like, privacy and uh, different types of rules. Like, I think EU is way, way, way far above them. I'm just worried Unreal Engine will become a monopoly. The good thing that you can keep in mind is that Unreal Engine is a phenomenal engine for running 3D games. But again, my understanding is not a game developer, is that Unity is actually great for making 2D games. And a lot of the people that are using Unity for that function are actually moving over to using another platform called Godot, and there's a couple of other ones. So some of these people will use Unreal, but there are closer versions to Unity than Unreal. That's my understanding. So it seems like, of course, this will, like if Unity falls apart, which I don't think is really gonna happen, but like theoretically, if it does happen, if Unity falls apart, it will massively increase Unreal Engine's like piece of the pie chart, like massively, but it still will not be a complete monopoly won't count, but only if they aren't the same build of a game that allows uh, players to continue progression. So, for actually quite a few demos, that's um, really quite bad. Mm -hmm. uh, early access games, they will count. As to fraudulent stuff, right? So somebody uh, spinning up the game on a bunch of virtual machines. I don't even know how they catch that. But again, trust me, bro. Uh, they say that they have- They can't catch it. There's no way. Like, not even the the best, like, the best fraud protection places in the world, right? Banks get hacked. If you think banks can't figure this out, there's no way a video game developer can. Come on. Fraud detection stuff that they built for their ad platform. They can handle it. And they'll have a way for developers to submit their concerns. Again, presumably after the developer has been charged. And if a, a developer is just charged, let's just say 30 grand, 40 grand, that's going to be very bad for their cash flow. That's huge. Right? Especially if it's soon after a game is launched and the money hasn't came in yet, you're, you're just going to fire a torpedo at a developer right when they actually need that cash flow again this is absolutely crazy um they also did confirm that they will be applying the threshold to the lifetime installs of the game 
Um, and also, web and streaming games built with Unity also do count because everything that runs the game is counted in some way. Now, wait, so if, wait, so it's applied retroactively? Like, wait, how does this work? Uh, I don't understand this. They will apply it to lifetime installations? Did I miss this yesterday? Because I feel like that's a, uh, that's a big one. That's a really big one. Is that even legal? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm sure we'll find out. Hey, now, Steve Totillo of Axios then went and got a bit more info, and there was a second round of updates from that QA um, about reinstalls after a sort of regrouping within Unity. Apparently, if the same game is reinstalled on the same device, it won't count, and somehow Unity can tell that, again, very suspicious. Uh, but if a game is installed on a new device or new hardware, that counts. So, imagine this. I'm a developer, sell a game in Unity. You install that on your PC, then you install it on your Steam Deck. For some reason, now I, have I the developer, I'm charged twice yeah. for that. There you even go. though you're doing it under one license of the game that you own. Charity yeah, it's completely illogical. Bundles will be exempt from uh, fees, and Unity will somehow provide a way for developers to notify Unity. Again, how's this going to actually work, you know? Um, subscription fees will fall upon the distributor, not the developer. So this is quite an odd one. This means that, say, Microsoft will be facing large fees for every Unity game they list on Game Pass, like, say, the smash hit Sea of Stars. Now, I wonder how Microsoft feels about this. Yeah, I, I have a feeling... I mean, Microsoft is a really big... Like, we were talking about how Tencent was a big company. I'm pretty sure Microsoft is bigger than Tencent. Like, Unity is really not that big. Microsoft should just buy them and change the rule. Fuck it. Pull an Elon Musk. Just buy it and change the rules. Now, if Sea of Stars... Like, whenever I boot up my Xbox uh, to, to play Starfield... Yeah, what, do I, what do I see when I go to Game Pass? Sea of Stars. Like, it's probably been downloaded millions of times. And, you know, that could actually get to a stage or a state. Like, obviously, the Sea of Stars devs are, like, okay. But again, you know, how much money did Microsoft pay for that? And could mm -hmm. Microsoft end up paying more in Unity license fees than the payout well, that was given Unity's to the developer? Game. Right? Like, that's Microsoft actually being so potentially a concern. And maybe that is yeah. all part of Unity's plan because they're seeing, that, again, via their proprietary method, maybe they look at all of these freemium uh, mobile games and all these, like, Game Pass, Epic Game, you know, free, uh, free games. Maybe they see all this and just look at the sheer amount of downloads and they're trying to find a way to monetize that. I mean, it very much looks like that's the case. Now, of course, these updates, you may notice that uh, these aren't really better because everything is somehow relying on Unity's uh, completely undefined trust. Yeah, exactly. Like, trust us, we have a proprietary system that will make sure that nothing goes wrong. Well, can we see it? No. Can you at least give us an idea? No. Is it exact or an estimate? It's whatever. <laughs> How can anybody trust that shit? Me bro data gathering, and it's somehow being able to uh, identify legitimate installations by some method, even though the runtime doesn't mm -hmm. phone home and they seemingly only are, are using aggregate data. Um, and the end result being that the distribution of your game will inevitably end up costing you in some way because, hey, guess what? If it costs your publisher, that's going to change the deal for you as a developer. Yeah. Especially because any money that something, uh, you know, will cost to your publisher, it's not like you pay, you know, in, um, in your recoup, you pay it back one to one. Publisher money costs money. So yeah. this is going to, <laughs> the idea, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, yeah, whenever they charge the publisher, the publisher charges the developer. If a publisher is on the hook for, let's just say, a hundred grand yeah. of, of fees from something like this, the developer, you know, in some publishing deals, that could cost the developer more than a hundred grand because of how the recoups work. So again, a lot of publishing... I think that's true. <laughs> Yeah, it's just... Oh my god.
Game deals would probably need to be changed to account for Get something fucked, like yeah. this as, I mean, as a new cost in the balance sheet. Um, and then they're also throwing publishers and distribution partners under the bus. And that means that taking uh, deals with developers can, well, just become less less lucrative mm -hmm. right it's quite crazy like i'm glad that we are making smaller scale mm -hmm. pc games where it's like you know where that's like a lot better but still like one of the things that really helped us with pale beyond is we released a demo and that meant that we had um suffice to say um well they released the demo and that's the thing right is like belly or studio they would have had to pay 20 cents for every download for that demo if they hit this threshold. So basically they would have had to pay, if it's 200,000 downloads, they would have had to pay theoretically, assuming they didn't make any money off of it or they broke even with the money that they did make. That's $40,000. Everyone was very- Demos are excluded now? Aha. Uh -huh. That's a big change to just kind of, oh, well, we're not going to do this now. They said most, oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. I did read that. I, I was assuming that it was new information. Apparently it might not be. They did say that some demos might be exempt, but not all of them. So basically if the demo is successful, it's not exempt. That's what I'd probably assume. Very happy with our wish list numbers. I think right now we have like 160, 170 thousand wish lists. But <laughs> through like Steam Next Fest and all that stuff, our demo did really I'm good totally work arbitrary. for yeah. us. And there's a chance then that actually some of those demo this is installs, start a hundred dollar games, like some of them, you mean hundred fifty dollar games, could be charged. That yeah. would really. I mean, that would suck. So this is all kind of whack. Um, again, Mike Bithel here, of course, Bithel Games, um, the thing that sort of propelled his career, I think a lot that people know about was, uh, like say, Thomas was alone. He's made many projects since. Um, I keep cycling back to this tweet and how hilariously exposing it is. Given their model legally cannot be collecting real user data, it amounts to a guess. A guess they are refusing to break down to those they are hoping to bill. We can't. We can't judge it, and we can't tell you how we try to judge it, but you can appreciate that we're not going to tell you how it works. Oh my god! Walk back imminent, but it reveals a lot. Yes, Trust because me. they say, we leverage our own proprietary data model. And you know, it's got to comply with GDPR and all that too. And yeah. you may think, surely everyone in Unity knew this was happening. Well, yeah, and they were all ignored. Uh, heard from Inside Unity, the blog post was reviewed for weeks, and internal concerns about poor slash confusing messaging, Game Pass, etc., were all ignored. It's resignation time for some folks. Yeah, Hopefully, we see a walk back. I fear for Unity. Let's and, see uh, what happened to their stock because uh, yesterday, um, let's see, Unity stock. Oh. Ooh, that's bad. Ooh, and then if you look at five, ooh, 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 ooh. That one's all right. That one's okay. This one's worse. Oh my god. Yeah, it's actually going down. Like that CEO getting fired. Yeah, that's huge. Aside about uh, John Riccatello, the CEO of Unity, the man who wanted to sell you bullets in Battlefield. Um, and last year had to post an apology because um, of the way that he called some developers. Um, you know what? I, I, I don't want to... The fucking idiots for pushing against monetization. Yep, there it is. President and CEO of Unity Software. I see where this is going on. Well... The same, Unity guy is the same guy who brought loot boxes to FIFA in 2009. Yep. Can get demonetized for swearing, but you know, you can look at my screen and uh -huh. what I'm highlighting right now. Um, this is what he called developers for pushing back against monetization. Um, you know, all right, no. <laughs> um, so this is something I can make no inference about certain pieces of information here. Um, a lot of people are, um, you know, going quite far in saying uh, certain things, and it would be, uh, you know, a shame if that got them any trouble, right? Got them any sort of notice in the mail. Um, 
I suppose a lot of people do find some of this information to be curious and pertinent, because on the 6th of September 2023, John Riccatello, president of and CEO of Unity Software Incorporated, sold 2,000 shares of the company. This move is part of a larger trend uh, for the insider. So over the past year, he's sold a total of 50,000 shares. How many total shares does he own? Because, like, is 2,000 a lot? Because if it's 2,000 out of 3,000, that's a lot. If it's 2,000 out of uh, 500,000, it's not. He's got 300,000 plus. Yeah, if he's got 300,000 plus shares, I actually, I, I really don't think that he's sold 50K total. Yeah, but like that's over the past year. I mean, I, I don't know. It's very hard to say. Yeah, it's 0.06% of his shares. I really actually like, originally I thought this was very telling. I think that if you contextualize it around being 0.06%, it's not like this guy's really cashing out. Who, over the past year, has sold a total of 50,610 shares and purchased none. Of course, He's just uh, buying a new please boat. consider this above information about this announcement being planned long in advance, and then think about, uh, of course, um, John Riccatello's sale of shares. I make no inference. Uh, about these two pieces of information. Obviously, though, you're now aware of these bits of information. Yeah, it seems Think as though them, that's not the case. Will. Now, this all appears to be some form of top-down push from the C-suite, with a, a lot, specific Maybe, focus yeah. on the kinds of games Unity thinks can make them the most money. Mm -hmm. It's the core thing, and look, you guys probably feel it as, as gamers. It's like, if you're not the whale, the developers don't care. You look at D4 and you're like, look at all that cool armor. I would maybe play the game to get that armor. Oh no, it costs you can't $30. Do that. They're yeah. not making it for me, they're making it for the whale. Well, Unity makes it feel like that to us now right and the fact that this does not apply to gambling it is sad that like it's uh, this is kind of like an aside but it's sad that like i can't look at like video game skins and be like well i i can't wait to earn this in the game i have to go buy it yeah i don't know like uh, you know you go back and you think about like classic wow this it was really cool you know the way you were able to do that back in the day and that's an interesting oh man it's an interesting thing with yeah. gambling anyway it doesn't it doesn't apply to that the fact that there are credits Wales if won. you implement their yep. proprietary um advertising Wales technology won, it just says exactly. absolutely everything look i fully expect a walk back here oh it's yeah. either they absolutely. walk back and they wholesale cut it or they walk back to a watered down version of it in which case they'll have made progress and it could just be the out of touch CEOs doing the usual thing saying it's only a vocal minority it's only the Twitter users real developers won't care real developers are too bought into our system yeah. and that actually is is partially true yeah. yeah sunk cost I mean this is the same logic they use with the battlefield bullets yeah and he's right the problem isn't that he's an asshole the problem that he's is he's right you've built your whole People pipeline around using unity every month costs you tens of thousands in, in 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 cash flow right to to pay for your team and uh you want to spend four five six months of you know stalling some progress to redo all your stuff on unreal engine that's probably going to be more expensive than these fees from unity so you can see they truly do have a captive audience so that is the situation um, there. Of course, if you want to get something that is uh, the making of The Pale Beyond, uh, because this is a book, it doesn't have an activation fee. Isn't that insane? Store.bowler. For now, bro, like, wait till they start charging you for paper. <laughs> you, you know, like, you buy a thing of paper, oh, you print something on the paper, you want to sell it? Okay, well, now we, you got to give us money for the fact that you used our paper. Games bloody hell yeah screw get the, ready oh screw the c-suite of unity not that Absolutely. many trees left guys come my on God, the poor people of that company have you care about the environment don't you led by these donkeys it is rough right that's it for me you can check out yesterday's video and i will see you again on this channel tomorrow well this is a great video i'm really glad that i watched this and i'm uh i i totally support them by the way like i'll link you guys the video bellewer has a vested interest in this he has made a game and he sells a game on steam that was made by unity he is directly affected by this so he understands exactly how this will affect his bottom line his uh you know his studio and the people that work there this is very shitty that it's happening 
Obviously, a lot of people asked me to look at this. I wanted to bring attention to it because I think how problematic this is. And huge W for Bell, you were talking about it. And I will be covering every update to this story as much as I can because I think it is absolute fucking bullshit. And uh, don't buy my game. I literally can't afford it. Isn't this just a stunt from Unity where they give us something complete and utter shit and they know it's going to get trashed on and then they introduce something less shit? Oh, the uh, anchoring strategy? I don't think that's a good idea for business-to-business -business transactions. That's only good from a uh, from an end user. Because an end user isn't thinking about the long-term effect of the d d diminished trust. Like, because Unity is selling to other businesses. Like, consumers are stupid, but businesses aren't stupid. Yeah, trust is more important than business business. Yeah, exactly. I'll link you guys the video one more time. Make sure to give it a like. Uh, I'm very, very glad to see Bell, you were talking about this. There were a number of developers that actually contacted me, and they wanted me to talk about this myself because, uh, you know, they know that we're involved with game development, and, uh, you know, we play games, we, you know, do this stuff a lot, I talk to developers, and, uh, this is affecting a lot of people in, like, a very serious way. And so I, I just hope that, you know, if Unity can't get their shit together, people can go over to another, uh, uh, another engine and use that instead. So there it is. Uh, do you think it'd be better for devs to move to Unreal regardless of possible walkback? I think that the reality is that if I was a development studio, this is what I would do. I would stick with Unity even if they walk it back until, and then I would also start developing for another engine simultaneously or developing for another engine, like start moving towards that direction. Like I would realize that this is a sinking ship even if it's not sunk already. Like I would not do, I wouldn't just like immediately leave because it that, that wouldn't be good for the studio, right? It, would, it might hurt the studio, it might hurt development. Uh, it would probably hurt the, uh, the developers, would make people have to repeat their time. Uh, so I would wait till the next studio, new project, and then I would transition over to a new, uh, a new thing. And, and the thing is, that's the problem, right? Is that this type of an effect and this is the problem that like quarterly earnings report uh, capitalism and not really capitalism, but quarterly earnings report um, like culture uh, creates is that this is an effect that will happen in seven quarterly earnings reports from now. But it is a reverberation from something that happened today. So like, yeah, you might not change it right now, even if they changed everything back, but you're going to remember this in a year and a half. How do you think this will affect us gamers? Oh, um, it'll just make you have to pay more money. Shorting Unity right now might be the most free money you could ever make from buying options. Yeah, I wonder what's going to happen. Uh, I really do. I think Unreal is uh, better and more technologically advanced, personally. I think that you're right, but Unity still seems to offer better, uh, better support for games that are smaller in scope and are two-dimensional. Uh, that's my understanding as somebody who's not a game developer.